All around the 3,400 square meter site, workers dug a series of trenches. They filled the trenches with rebar and concrete. The walls kept the water out, making it safer to dig within. But there was still a problem. North Shore workers were using China's only deep trench digger. So on the South Shore, the contractors were forced to take a riskier approach. They decided to control the deep underground water by freezing the ground. To do this, they needed to construct a huge refrigeration plant. The plant chilled salt water to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Salt water has a much lower freezing point than fresh. Pipes circulated the water more than 30 meters down, all around the site. This system worked like the coils in a giant freezer. The ultra-cold water froze the soil into a meter-thick wall, and these walls of icy dirt kept the water out. With groundwater no longer circulating inside the two sites, the soil became safer to dig. The excavation went on 24 hours a day, as the crews tried to finish before the summer floods threatened to fill their excavation site with water. These enormous pits would descend at least 30 meters, but every four meters, workers needed to stop to pour concrete braces. The deeper the workers went, the more dangerous the job became. Groundwater was constantly pushing the walls towards collapse, and the deeper the hole, the stronger the pressure. The deeper you do dig, the more freezing you have to do. And uh, when it gets very deep, then actually water can come from the bottom, and it can come very, very quick. Six months after digging began, the two anchorages plunged at least nine stories. They looked like parking decks and were each large enough to park 7,000 cars. Hundreds of men now worked at the two vulnerable sites and the danger was about to escalate. Monsoon season and its flooding were just weeks away. Building China's longest suspension bridge required constructing two of the country's biggest anchor blocks. The blocks needed to hold the massive main cable securely or the entire bridge would collapse. So far, workers had excavated 280,000 cubic meters of dirt. But engineers now decided it was too risky to continue. They ordered the crews to the next stage of construction. Workers filled both anchorages with ballast, 310,000 cubic meters of concrete and sand. The Rin Yang's engineers had won their first race against the tumultuous Yangtze and escaped a disaster. Eleven months later, the region saw the worst rains in five years. But by the time the flood did hit, workers had moved on to building the above ground part of the anchor blocks, where the cables would attach. But you can't just hook the end of a main cable into the concrete, it would pull right out. So as each cable entered the anchor block, it fanned into 184 bundles. The cable spread from one meter to nine meters wide, 
This distributed the pulling force across 83 square meters. Each cable bundle was separately anchored in concrete. It was a forest of steel strands, and it was all extremely vulnerable to rust. To protect it, the anchor block was sealed airtight. The atmosphere was constantly dehumidified, so rust couldn't form. From the anchor blocks, the cables climbed to the top of the bridge towers and across the river. Each cable weighs over 20 million kilograms, too heavy to put in place straight away. builders would have to string them one strand at a time. First they took a guide cable across the river by boat. To do this they needed to block all ship traffic. They would later use this steel rope to pull more lines across. It took 12 hours to get the rope up and over the towers, but once the task was done, they could open the river. Workers slowly built on the guide rope. They created a catwalk high above the water. They used this platform to string the cables, one bundle at a time. Each wire in these bundles was made of ultra-strong steel, so strong that just one could lift three cars. The contractor had pre-cut every wire to a specific length. The builders would have to replace any that fell short, at a cost of millions. Every cable in that bundle is, has a different length. We have a lot of faith in the computation we do today to predict the, the lengths, but of course there's always uh, the risk of we made a mistake. 24 hours a day, workers continued to install the Rinyang's main cables. Many of these men had migrated from mountain regions because of the $200 a month they could earn here. They needed to be in excellent physical shape and have nerves as strong as the cables they were stringing. It took seven months to string all 368 bundles. Workers compressed the bundles into two giant cables. The 47,000 steel wires they contained strung end to end would circle the earth three times. Workers wrapped each bundle with an interlocking steel band, then painted it to keep out moisture. The finished cables were almost a meter thick and two and a half kilometers long. They were the bridge's most expensive parts and perhaps the most important. Whole weight of the whole bridge is hanging up on those main cables. Because of the length of those suspension bridges, that could be a very large force. The cable's greatest enemy will always be the moisture that causes rust. To protect them, the builders installed dehumidifiers to pump dry air into their housing. Few bridges have this state-of-the-art system. It should keep the cables corrosion-free for at least 120 years. China is building 40,000 kilometers of roads and bridges every year. This nation now consumes a third of the steel produced on Earth, 
and it uses half the world's concrete. This building boom may be the biggest in history. Almost three years after construction began on the Rinyang, workers were ready to attack the final stage, raising the road deck. The design of these steel boxes was critical. It could determine if the Rinyang would survive for decades or quickly fall apart. This happened to one suspension bridge in the United States. In July 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State opened to traffic. At the time, it was the world's third longest suspension bridge. Right from the beginning, it had a problem. Light wind would set it in motion. It quickly earned the name Galloping Gertie. Four months later, a gale of just 67 kilometers an hour made the bridge twist and undulate. The motion fed on itself, amplifying to a catastrophic condition called flutter. After a few hours, the bridge could take no more. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was doomed because its road span was too flexible. It could still be standing today if designers had stiffened the span with a truss, like the one below the world's longest suspension bridge, the Akashi Kikyo in Japan. China's Rinyang Bridge was nearly twice as long as the Tacoma Narrows. But engineers here had also opted for a deck design without stiffening trusses. Would flutter destroy the Rinyang? The Rinyang was designed to be China's longest suspension bridge, with a span nearly one and a half kilometers long. All of it exposed to high winds and even typhoons. But the builders were counting on a highly aerodynamic design to keep it steady. The steel boxes that made up the bridge span were just three meters high. They had slanted edges, like aeroplane wings, to allow wind to flow around them rather than push them into motion. In a giant wind tunnel, the builders blasted the design with typhoon force gales. The deck heaved, but there was no catastrophic flutter. Still, the Rin Yang was entering a critical phase. Monsoon season was only five months away, and a suspension bridge with the deck incomplete was at its most vulnerable. You've got a bunch of girder segments that are almost dangling from the cable, and if the wind starts to blow too hard, then they'll start banging around and potentially damaging each other. The Breen Yang's builders now faced yet another race to the finish. They had special gantries made to speed up the work. The gantries rode the bridge cables and hoisted each road section into place. Ninety days after lifting the first slab, the Rinyang's road crew locked the last one into position. The 1,490-meter span, the third longest in the world, was complete. Almost immediately, the tough job of maintaining it began. Like the bridge cables, the span's 25,000 tons of steel can corrode. But the designers made it easy to inspect. A tiny electric car inside lets workers travel the entire length in about 18 minutes. In the shadow of the bridge is a high-tech control center. Sensors capture every move it makes, and the Rin Yang is in constant motion. 